Today, we're going to look at the animated Planet of the Apes series. Return to the Planet of the Apes! I grew up loving two science fiction franchises, Star Trek and Planet of the Apes. I loved the IDW Boom Team up to produce the crossover in comic book form of the two franchises. As a child, I couldn't get enough of Star Trek reruns in the era before videotapes. Yes, I'm that old. I recorded each episode on audio tape and listened to them before going to bed every night. I was excited when the Star Trek cartoon came out. I was 14 years old and had only just begun to realize that the shows I was watching were reruns. When they canceled the Planet of the Apes TV series, I was disappointed. But then I learned that it, too, was coming back in an animated show. I was excited, but then I became disappointed when the show aired. I couldn't watch it because of the limited animation. I just could not get into it. Over the years, I began watching it on YouTube, and my appreciation for it grew, as the stories for the show are extremely well written. So, I decided to produce my own video on this underrated classic, occupying its own continuity, yet clearly drawing aspects from the first two films. Return to the Planet of the Apes is an animated series that was produced in the 1970s by DePatie, Frilling Enterprises based on the Planet of the Apes franchise. In the year 1976, a small space shuttle with a three-man crew is launched as part of an experiment in relativity, achieving a speed where 100 years and multiple days goes past in almost no time at all for them. But then their ship develops a malfunction and goes blasting towards an alien planet, hurtling rapidly through time to the point that, when they crash, land in a lake, over 2,000 years have passed for them, Setting out in hopes of finding civilization, they discover themselves on a strange world of cavemen, like humans and advanced, intelligent apes, which are not too welcoming towards the intelligent humans. I urge our august body to dispatch our guerrilla army to seek out and destroy every humanoid animal who roams our planet. Director Doug Wildey ran up against NBC Emulative Claws, which stated that something from an animated series needed to be eliminated if a six-year-old child could physically emulate what he sees on the cartoon. This meant he could not equip apes with machine guns or knives or clubs or pistols or hand grenades, and that while the apes could wear rifles, they could not use them. Finally, Wildy asked if it would be okay to use howitzers. The network agreed that they could not think of a way a six-year-old could operate a howitzer, so Wildy loaded the series with the weapon. The cast included Bill Hudson, who was this show's version of Taylor, Jeff Allen, who was this version of Dodge, or even more closely McDonald from Battle for the Planet of the Apes, just based on sharing the same actor and physical appearance. Judy Franklin, who was this show's version of Stuart, Ronald Brent, who was this show's version of Brent from Beneath the Planet of the Apes, Underdwellers, the mutants from Beneath. Traveling at the speed of plot, the scientists Cornelius and Zira don't seem to have to travel very far to find Bill and Jeff. Also, they can see Bill or Jeff's reflection signals from the window of their lab. The humanoid's enclave must be right outside of Ape City, even when they move downstream to a more remote area. Yet Urko and his men can never seem to find the humanoid hideouts. The show has a King Kong copy. Kigger is a giant ape living in the mountains, similar to the apes of the astronauts time in appearance and intellect. You know what they say, human see, human do. The animated series has a lot of renamed cliches and titles, similar to the human see, human do type of phrases in the movies, such as the Ape Father is a nod to the Godfather, as the works of William Ape Spear is a nod to Shakespeare. Airing on NBC, the series premiered on September 6, 1975, and was broadcast until September 4, 1976, although only 13 episodes were produced. Crador and the Underdwellers are based on the mutants in Beneath the Planet of the Apes. 
Despite their initial misunderstanding, they were nowhere near as hostile towards the astronauts as the mutants from that film. In fact, they abduct Judy only because they worship her as a goddess, and they come to trust Bill and Jeff as friends of USA and common enemies of the apes. It is a link to a past best forgotten. I order you to destroy it. From now on, I give the orders, Dr. Zayas. In Screaming Wings, the apes find an old World War Roman II fighter and manage to make it fly. In a Chuck Cunningham type syndrome, Ron Brent kind of just disappears without comment after Mission of Mercy. The series is full of shout outs to the first two films, and even one or two to the live action series. Cornelius and Zira the chimpanzees are scientists with respect for humans. Dr. Zayas the orangutan is a lawkeeper hoping to kill the space travelers to avoid the destruction of the ape society. Urko the gorilla chief of security leads the hunt for the humans. Nova the savage woman, the mysterious earthquakes and walls of fire being created by the underdwellers in the forbidden zone. Nova even has the dog tags of Brent, the main character from beneath. Judy Franklin is the only female astronaut in the entire franchise to have an active role equal to the male astronauts. Stewart in the original movie never even made it out of her hibernation chamber. In The Unearthly Prophecy, the astronauts discover that they are on Earth in the far future. The apes in the animated series are as advanced as their literary counterparts, while their film counterparts were less advanced than their literary counterparts. They were advanced enough to have guns, and the series ends with no resolution to Bill, Jeff, Judy, Cornelius and Zira's efforts to end the world's status quo of humans being subservient to apes. It was considered to renew the series for a three-episode second season to wrap everything up, but it never came to pass. The astronauts are no closer to finding a way back to their own era, but the show still ends on a hopeful note. Urko has been suspended and will likely face further punishment for his unsanctioned, last-ditch effort to exterminate the humans, who have forged an alliance with the Underdwellers and found a safe, fortified place to live. Bill and Cornelius also plan to present an ancient book revealing the true history of the planet to the Council, in an attempt to foster peace between the apes and the humans. Also, the apes are learning about their forefathers. That was our show for today. What did you think? Are you a fan of the original Planet of the Apes? Have you ever seen the animated series? What did you think of this show? Let me know in the comments section below, and while you're at it, I'd be honored if you subscribe to my channel. Ring the bell to stay informed, and check out my Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter franchise. Also in the comments section. Until next time. This is Kevin Given saying live long and prosper. May the force be with you and keep reaching for the stars.